Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Ashley Latif. I'm a GP based in Nottingham, and I'm part of the COVID response group of British Islamic Medical Association. And just here uh, to share some of our reflections um, uh, from British Islamic Medical Association's COVID response group. So who are we? Uh, we are basically a national democra uh, democratic professional um, association of British Muslim healthcare professionals. And we've got membership of uh, over 4,500 members. Um, we are all volunteer led um, and we are funded and delivered by our volunteers. So everything that I'm presenting today wasn't funded by any other organizational uh, that organization, whether it's national or local. It was all done by our volunteers and um, our uh, associate members, really. So uh, this is our, our mission, really, to unite and inspire members um, in the service of our communities and our profession. And some of the work that we already do in community, and a lot of you might already be aware of, um, is already on display. And this is before, of course, COVID hit. So what was the COVID challenge? Now, we're all talking about, of course, and commemorating the first year, um, the, the, you know, the uh, year after the, the lockdown came into effect. But we were already getting ready for um, the inevitable. It wasn't a matter of if the lockdown will happen. It, will, uh, it was just a matter of when it will happen. And you can see, really, this is, this is uh, one of our colleagues in Italy, quoting from Lombardy on 6th of March. And the situation there was pretty horrific. And, and it was a matter of time, really, before you know, we saw similar numbers. Equally, it was very difficult because we had world leaders um, still being skeptical about uh, COVID-19 and not committing to uh, one way or the other. Also, what we felt uh, from the Muslim community's perspective was some of the guidelines that were issued um, by national organizations not very in, uh, inclusive. For example, uh, you know, this particular uh, guideline, which was issued on 15th of June, mentioned talking about uh, opening places of worship for individual worship, which is something that does not apply really to uh, Muslims because mosque is supposed to be a place of congregational worship. Muslims can pray anywhere, anytime, individually, and mosque is supposed to be a place of congregational, congregational prayer. I, I won't go into the details of this, just kind of um, to, to uh, I'm sure everyone's aware of this, but um, the Bami community was disproportionately affected by the COVID-19 uh, infection, as we all know now. Um, and, and Muslims in UK make up one third of the Bami community. It's a significant number. So, so you can already see that, you know, um, it, they were already disproportionately affected. And, and more as more and more data came out, it was very clear, especially the Muslim women, men were particularly uh, more affected by COVID-19 infection. So what did the community do? So um, this is part of our uh, the Muslim uh, national COVID response. Uh, and and uh, the, the, this was a time for unity, a time to unite. And then we got together all the various organizations working at various fronts. And this is happening right at the very beginning, even when the lockdown was not officially declared. And, 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 and we in BIMA uh, took the lead uh, uh, as the medical COVID response group. And medical Res COVID response group had further um, uh, branches and, and work. As you can see here, we did so uh, much work on different fronts, uh, starting from engaging uh, with mosques and generating guidelines, but also around you know, safe uh, burial and safe washing of the disease. Um, you know, uh, creating Ramadan rapid guidelines. Uh, so, you know, it was, was, Ramadan was very close when, when the COVID hit and, 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 and we created about a hundred page document uh, covering all the various illnesses. Um, again, mental health and, and you know, uh, guide on visitation rights, um, as you're aware of, uh, you know, there were so many cases where people were actually not allowed to visit their dying relatives in the hospital for, for various reasons. And, and, and so, this work was happening at various fronts. And this is a picture of me delivering a talk 11 days before the national lockdown. So you can see we were already getting our mosques prepared um, for the inevitable, which was going to happen. And these are some of the examples. And these guidelines keep on evolving as the time went by. Um, so for example, uh, you know, when they initially, when the, when the uh, you know, when the COVID hit the country, but the lockdown was not in place, we 
made sure that the community was ready for the inevitable, you know, uh, just making sure they're adhering to the three principles, which is washing their hands because cleanliness is part of, is half of our faith according to Muslim religion. Also, the, the, the you know, the, the guidelines around uh, the messaging around, um, uh, you know, the, the plague, uh, so to speak, or, or the pandemic, and, and using uh, the prophetic uh, narrations where he has clearly said that if you hear of a plague uh, in a land, do not enter therein. And, and, and if you're in it, then you do not go out of it. So it's clearly from Muslim tradition and, and also, uh, you know, debunking the myths as my colleague has already mentioned, um, uh, you know, addressing that as well to ask from the people of knowledge, if you do not know. We, of course, engage uh, uh, with the community at uh, the mental health front as well, working with other um, uh, fellow organizations, like Sakoon and MCB and uh, and uh, MWN UK, um, you know, of course, addressing the mental health uh, aspects of the problem. As the pandemic was going, we already was working towards uh, flu vaccination. So these are some of the posters and some of the videos that we produced around August time. But again, to increase the uptake of flu vaccination, it was so very relevant at that time because evidence was coming out that if you get an uh, uh, additional infection and you had COVID, being a, from a BAMI background, your chances really just of, of dying from COVID were really, really high. So kind of generating those um, uh, messages and, and uh, reaching out to the community uh, and increasing, uh, trying to increase the uptake of flu vaccination. And as we approached November, as you all are aware, uh, there were so many videos that were popping up, especially on WhatsApp, um, you know, uh, encouraging people to, you know, uh, decline the vaccine, for example, uh, uh, messages around aluminum in the vaccine, uh, and messages around, uh, you know, um, that they are fetal products in the vaccine. Um, and, and that's the time when we started producing those myths and slides, we became really, really famous. And then we produced our uh, position papers uh, around the vaccine to increase the confidence of the Muslim communities around vaccines, um, giving the Islamic perspective as well as the medical side. And, and some of uh, you uh, would have seen our myth busting slide, which became uh, a hit instantaneously. And we have now translated them into 12 lang languages and they are being translated across the world. This is just a snapshot of our uh, website, uh, www.britishima.org, where you can find all our work um, that we've done. We've up to date, we've done about uh, 95 community webinars. Um, uh, and all of these, as I said, were not funded. They were done all by our volunteers in our spare time. We're all working professionals and no one gets paid for all of this. And we continue to engage with the communities. And we've had so many media engagements over this time as well, whether it's radio or electronic media. And the, the, the amazing thing that, uh, about our work has been, it's always been evidence-based. And, and this is some of the findings from our recent survey done in Nottingham, and, and basically showing what my <laughs> main concern for people are about long-term safety profile. You and some of the other work. Sure, okay. So so one like, sure, sure, I'd like to just wrap up. Um, so there were three key messages that we tried to work towards. First of all, the impact, and, and we generated that message you say that, that we need to unite to defeat COVID-19 and protect each other yeah. because it has disproportionately impacted the Muslim communities. Um, and we have to have the trust. And we have to rely on the people that we would normally trust on, which is the messengers. And also giving people that, that uh, in, uh, information that you ultimately, it is your choice and no one's enforcing it upon you, but rather we are only recommending certain things. So in summary, the tools that we used were the language of faith, and we combined it with science, not making it a battle between faith and science, but a combined effort. And second thing was we translated our work in webinars, which were also focused, and we made our work available, not just locally, but across the, the world, and they have been translated into Roman, French, and German languages already. And just a picture to leave you with. You know, if a tower like this was to catch fire. Um, if someone came with a bucket and tried to burn out the fire, I probably will be angry with that person because why did they not call other people and unite in this time of need? 
this is a time of unity and we have to all combine our effort because as the message was here, we win or we are only safe if we are all safe. That is the message that I want to leave you with. Thank you so thank much for giving. Thank you very much.